Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. I hope you all had a fabulous, fabulous weekend. We have a lot of information to cover as usual. So let's just jump in and get there, shall we? Let's go. To start with, after a hard day of moving things around, Hubby and I went back to that restaurant and we both had tiramisu martinis. You guys know I don't usually drink alcohol, but this thing doesn't even taste like alcohol. It tastes like chocolate. It's delicious. All right, let's go. First up, we're starting with Princess Anne, the Princess Royal, who went to Cow Bog Farm, which is one of the nine monitor farms. The Wilson family hosted her there. She was given a guided tour of the farm. Uh, she planted a gum tree. Now, besides the Wilson family and Princess Anne, Jack Dalziel, I hope I'm saying that right, the Scottish government's relations senior advisor was also in attendance. And of course, we did the obligatory plaque unveiling and the receiving of some, some absolutely gorgeous flowers. Also, Princess Anne went to the Intelligence Corps. She is the commander in chief. She met with staff there. She also met with the National Cyber Force and the Armed Forces, and she laid a week at the memorial for the intelligence staff. Next up, Princess Catherine, the Princess of Wales, uh, did a video showing her on a visit to Iceland Foods with the supermarket CEO, Richard Walker. And the point is to show the role that businesses can play in supporting children and their carers. Of course, as is usual, Catherine, just about everything Catherine had on that day was a rewear and she looked fabulous. All right, moving on. Next up, a few days ago, the Haberdashers Monmouth Schools got a special visit from the Duke of Gloucester, who attended the Freedom of Monmouth Parade of the Royal Monmouthshire Royal Engineers. Very nice. Next up, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh, Edward, went to Farnham on Monday, and he planted the 70th and final tree in the avenue that was made to mark the Platinum Jubilee of the Queen. How touching. Very nice. Next up, we have Princess Eugenie, who was in Hong Kong wearing a 149-pound dress showing off her baby bump. Believe it or not, she was only there to visit friends. Would be that we all could go to Hong Kong to visit friends. Moving on. Next up, King Charles, during his coronation, is going to be wearing a very special gold silk coat that his mother wore, his grandfather wore, and his great-grandfather wore as well. He will apparently practice wearing it during the dress rehearsals. Uh, so they photoshopped a picture to see how he might look wearing it. That's about the worst photoshop I think I've ever seen. <laughs> there apparently are going to be lots of outfit changes. And um, so they're doing several dress rehearsals to make sure it all goes very smoothly. There is a new stole which will be placed over something called the Super Tunica. And it's being produced by a London livery firm. Now, apparently the group that made the stole back in 1953 for his mother no longer does that, they're saying, but it will still present this, the stole to the king. Yeah, it's kind of odd. All right, moving on. All right, moving on. Catherine and William, the Prince and Princess of Wales, their three children received a copy of a new book called The King's Pants. And of course, Catherine and William's office wrote to the author, Nicholas Allen, and thanked him for the gesture, saying the children really, really enjoyed the book. Apparently, it was beautifully written, beautifully illustrated with watercolors, and it is a tale of a new monarch and his favorite underwear. The king cannot rule without his royal pants, and he has a specific pair for every occasion, including his coronation pants. This book will be available for purchase on April 6th. Go get one. All right, moving along. Next up, uh, we know that Prince William went on a two-day trip to Poland, 
And apparently he held a meeting with the country's president. And while he was there, he thanked them, of course, for all the, of the help and the people of Ukraine. And during the private audience, he said, oh, we're looking forward to seeing you at the coronation. <laughs> there you go. Moving along, we have a new list of recipients of honors under the Royal Victorian Order in recognition of their service to the Queen and as part of a special set of demise awards. So the eight pallbearers who carried the Queen's coffin at her funeral are apparently going to be recognized on that special list. They were all selected from the King's Company, then the Queen's Company, of the 1st Battalion of Grenadier Guards. Now, also recognized on this list is Angela Kelly, who we know was the Queen's personal assistant, advisor, and curator, who worked for the Queen for over 25 years and was made a commander of the Royal Victorian Order. And during the COVID lockdown, she was one of the small group dubbed the HMS bubble that the Queen isolated with. And she once said in an interview, quote, we are just two typical women. We discuss clothes, makeup, and jewelry. How nice. All right, we're on with Harry and Meghan now. When it comes down to it, you guys, they basically have lost the power struggle with King Charles. Basically, Buckingham Palace won. We know that for two years, they have waged a, quote, exhausting, never-ending battle of wits and PR strategy against the firm, but they ended up on the losing side, okay? They've thrown all kinds of dirt on the royal family, from questions about the baby's skin, titles not being handed over, I, you know, I was made to cry, they didn't hug me, nobody taught me to curtsy, uh, my mental health was, you know, going bad, all of this was going on. And yet on the other side of this, uh, the royal family is doing just fine. <laughs> you know, some of the claims that Harry and Meghan made have now proven to be lies. Meghan's been caught in lies. And so now people have just had enough. You can't talk to two multimillionaires living in a big mansion and listen to their whining and not at a point go, you know, enough already. They cried racism. They're, they're like the little boy who cried wolf. And they're sh the, the, everybody's shock and anger and outrage has faded. They, they've had enough. And in the middle of all this, Charles is busy, busy planning his first overseas visit. Queen Camilla, people love her. Williams popped over to Poland, you know. And now the um, new popularity rankings have come out. And you can just imagine where Harry and Meghan are in that. YouGov did a survey, and that pretty much shows that the royal family's popularity came back compared to last December, right after Harry and Meghan took their first swipe at them. Now, this poll was carried out between March 18th and the 20th, and a total of 1,983 adults in the UK were asked their opinion. The answers could go anywhere from very positive to very negative, and I don't know. Megan had 22% say they had a positive view and 65% had a negative opinion. And Harry actually went up. So his positive opinions went from 24 to 25%, but his negative opinions are at 64. The Princess of Wales had 68% positive. Princess Anne had 70% positive. Royal family's doing well. All right, next up, this article is really just a clickbait because it says that she's set to lose her home and she must move in weeks. But when you read it, this is the woman who just was awarded something by um, King Charles for being, you know, a 25 year, what, loyal worker or 20 years for the queen. And then when you open it up, it says she may have to leave. It was thought that she would get the home for life and, you know, it's close to her son, and so it's easy. And they're afraid she might be a victim. So they believe she had to vacate. But again, this is clickbait. Nobody knows what's really going on. Uh, I don't believe that. And until I see confirmation, I do not believe for one second that Charles would put her out. I just don't believe it. All right, moving on. All right, next up, I just had to put this up. This woman, Pagan Trelloway, um, who's a massive sugar was putting up about what a fabulous lifestyle and what a wonderful life Harry had and all of his freedom. But the truth is, if you have that much freedom and unimaginable wealth and you have to use psychedelic drugs to cope with your fabulous lifestyle, then something's wrong. Because I completely agree with this. People who need drugs to be happy are not happy. Moving on. 
All right, next up, this really got my attention because Harry and Meghan want to be part of that special family moment when the family gets on the balcony. They want to show unity. They want to show that they're together and they're close. Aren't these the two people who said, and I'm exactly what they said, that they had to flee for their psychological and their physical safety? Isn't that what they said? Haven't they been trashing the family for three years? I, 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 but you want to have a close family moment? Well, people on Twitter went bonkers. I love what this person said. I mean, she did tell everybody how awful she was treated. She wanted to die, yet she stood side by side with them at the Jubilee, was with them at the Queen's funeral, but yet she's refusing to even call her dad over some pap pictures. Oh, I so agree with that. And I definitely agree with this Twitter user. You can't show sh kindness to strangers when you treat your own family like trash. Charity begins at home. So maybe that special family moment should start with, you know, Thomas Markle. Now, I showed you pictures the other day. He was seen with his son, Thomas Markle Jr. at LAX. Uh, this is what's being reported that you can see from Center View. I mean... Uh, this is what's being reported, that in order to get positive press, Megan is going to publicly make up with her father, allow him to see the kids, and to meet Harry for the first time, and maybe Thomas could even go with her and Harry to the coronation. You know, that was thrown out there. We all know that will never happen. But that was the thought process. And of course, Samantha Markle came out and said, nope, that's not where he was. Well, of course, Kinsey Schofield, one of my favorite people, had some things to say about all of this. So listen up. Um, can we talk about the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and that coronation? Well, we're calling them the Duke and Duchess of Hash over here because um, we're, we're here, you know, they're 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 talking a lot about drug use and we're concerned about how they're how they got in, how at least Prince Harry got his visa. Uh, but yeah, there's a story circulating online now that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex want a special family moment and they would like to appear on the balcony alongside King Charles, Queen Consort Camilla, Prince William and Catherine, the Princess of Wales. Now, as you can imagine, royal watchers are none too thrilled about this. Uh, you know, they, they, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex did not appear on the balcony during the Platinum Jubilee. So mm. it's you know interesting that they would want to appear on the balcony for King Charles's coronation. And, you know, I have to tell you, if you're looking for a special family moment, Thomas Markle lives in your the, the same time zone as you. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call your dad, Megan. Now, there was also some talk because apparently uh, Kinsey has a podcast, a very successful one, and she spoke with one of Diana's friends. And that friend said that she didn't want Harry and Meghan at the coronation. And here's why. Listen to this family. Um, but I will say that one of Diana's friends, because uh, I have a blog and a podcast about Princess Diana to die for daily. One of Diana's friends told me she hopes that they do not go and she does not believe they should be on the balcony. One of Diana's friends. And what motivates that view, do you think? What's behind it? She thinks that they have disrespected the monarchy and they talk too much. But when it comes to the balcony, do they really belong there? I mean, they have spent three years trying to destroy everything that Queen Elizabeth built. And don't forget that they rejected her on her deathbed. Days before she passed away, she asked them to come visit her and they rejected her invitation. So, you know, I just, I have little sympathy for them when it comes to this stuff. All right, moving on. They're saying that Harry and Meghan are trying to recreate a royal court in the U.S. after their failed Mexit deal. Well, I, I've been saying that for forever. Uh, the blind items are coming out. Harry and Meghan still want to be called the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. She still wants people to curtsy to her. She's got the staff curtsying to Archie and Lilibet. That they were ring, you know, called not Archie and Lilibet, Prince and Princess. They tried to do that in the UK, remember? And the Queen put the kibosh on it. And just a quick reminder in the middle of all that, that the bill to remove titles is still working its way through Parliament. Let's see what happens.
Now, articles are coming out that they're going to have babysitter issues if they go to the coronation. I don't get articles like that. Somebody explain that to me because after all, when the queen died, they left their kids at home for three weeks. They didn't have any issues then. Now, it's, it ranks right there with articles like this one. Harry is set to be excused from paying homage to Queen Camilla at the, at the coronation. Let me tell you something. Nobody is kneeling down to do any of that. The only person who's doing that is William. But I think that it would be hilarious if he had to curtsy and bow, which they will. I agree with Duchess Pinocchio here. They should attend. They have to do the curtsy to Prince William and Catherine in front of the entire world. And then basically the same thing to Camilla. Interesting. Yes, they should go. Now, you guys should know that um, the two of them are apparently very nervous what's going to happen if they don't go to the coronation. Because after all, they have to show that they're still part of the family. I'd be nervous if I were them too. All right, moving on. All right, this, this is just disgusting. Um, the family of Princess Diana's chauffeur, uh, uh, Henry Paul, are very upset with Netflix because they're basically recreating the car crash on The Crown. Um, they've taken some incendiary footage. They're doing some flashback reconstruction, and um, it's not good. This gentleman above is um, Mr. Paul's only surviving brother, and he's just ill about it. I would be too. These pictures that you're looking at above were leaked. They show the replica of the mangled Mercedes, which Diana was in. And then these pictures came out showing the car being towed into the tunnel because they're filming the crash. Now, I have to agree with this particular Twitter user who put this up. Harry slammed anybody who talked about his mom, who talked about the crash. But now I guess since Netflix is doing it, just like they did Diana the Musical, he's got nothing to say. That boy has sold his soul. Terrible. All right. Now, this came up. People were like, what is going on with the royal family website? Because Lily never had a page. And as far as I can tell, she still doesn't. But Archie had one, and the page disappeared off the website. And people were like, what is going on? I mean, it even came out in the news. Look, Archie's royal family profile disappears from the royal website. And everybody was like, what is going on? Why did they take it down? It really was quite a simple explanation from, okay, from what I'm seeing, it's a simple explanation. If you looked really carefully at it, Archie's profile said Archie, Mountbatten, Harrison, you know, whatever, master. Now it says at the top, Prince Archie. So they were revamping it was all they were doing. Everybody was having a complete meltdown. Now, maybe it's just me, but I always find the wording of this a little odd. He was born on this time, at this day. He's their first child. You know, Harry was present for the birth. This is how much he weighed. But it, it I don't know. It, it doesn't ring to me like she's the one who gave birth to him. I know that sounds really crazy, but when I read that, that's what I see. Hmm. All right. Coming towards the end here, they're saying that Harry and Meghan will be able to drip feed stories after the coronation and try to fix their image. Um, I don't see that happening, but I mean, that's what they're saying, that somehow they'll be able to reframe the narrative again. They'll be able to change the narrative again. Yeah. And to end this today, apparently there is a sculpture that's going to be projected onto St. Paul's Cathedral. It's going to be filled with human blood. The sculpture is called Royal Blood, and so blood is being pumped into the royal coat of arms. So the blood is going to be taken by a registered nurse and kept in a fridge and then pumped into the sculpture. Now, the artist, who, by the way, was in the Soviet Union Army, said that all the blood is coming from Afghan donors because they're all so upset with Harry and his remarks about killing people was like knocking, you know, chess pieces off of a board. Yep. Once again, Harry and his big mouth. All right, you guys, 
Um, we went out to the house. There was a thunderstorm. And so Finn decided to hide in the wine fridge area. Yeah, obviously the wine fridge has not been installed yet. But don't worry. He came out after a little food. He's very food driven. He was enticed and he popped right out when the food was offered. All right, you guys, you know what I want. Leave those comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell. Don't forget if you've already hit that bell, double check and make sure that you are still subscribed. Don't forget to get in the description box the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, my Patreon, the physical address in case there's something you want to mail. For those of you who've donated to my coffee fund and through the thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.